This is Field Sports Channel News. Basque claims police are putting public safety at risk because of firearms licensing failings. The criticism comes in a written submission to the Home Affairs Committee inquiry into policing priorities. Basque says the 43 licensing authorities in England and Wales are unable to manage their workload, with some refusing to process grants and many taking more than a year to process renewals. It says a largely unprofessional, overburdened and poorly resourced police licensing service puts public safety at risk. The head of firearms for Basque, Bill Harriman, says urgent action is needed. He supports an idea put forward at the inquest into the Plymouth shootings that firearms officers should be retrained and accredited annually. At the moment, there are many firearms inquiry officers who aren't trained, who are not directed, and some, a system of accreditation that they had to go back to on an annual basis to make sure they were fit to practice effectively is a, a very, very important proposition. A video thought to have come from a WhatsApp group of poachers shows men and dogs bringing down a red stag. Be warned, it makes for distressing viewing. The footage shows one of the men repeatedly stabbing the stag in the heart and lungs area. It is thought to have been filmed in Nottinghamshire, where police have been cracking down on groups of poachers running dogs after deer under spotlights. The Countryside Alliance says the debate in Parliament on shortening the woodcock season is an attack on shooting. While Justice has collected more than 100,000 signatures which triggered the discussion by MPs, it's calling for the season to shoot woodcock to be reduced to just two months in winter and not to start earlier than the beginning of December. Shooters say it is a pointless argument as it won't bring any benefit for the bird, which is common in Europe as far as Japan and is on the edge of its western range in the UK. The chief executive of the Countryside Alliance, Tim Bonner, says the Wild Justice petition is a waste of parliamentary time. Personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't go out and shoot a woodcock in, in, in October or early November. I don't think there are very few people who do, if, if anyone. Um, and you know, it's, it's not unreasonable. I think many of us take, you know, take, take an effort view of that. But, but the idea that with all the challenges facing us, that this is an issue that, that, that is somehow important or a focus, I'm afraid it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. And it is merely you know, a, a really niche attempt at attacking shooting. Gamekeepers in South Yorkshire and Derbyshire are heading to the moors at night to count mountain hares. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust is leading the research. Results from last year show the number of hares was between two and five times higher than recent estimates and similar to the number of mountain hares in Scotland. Gamekeepers have cast doubt on other studies funded by the conservation industry. Gamekeepers are counting the animals at night as this is the more accurate way to calculate the true numbers. More than 30 people will be out counting. The initiative is supported by the National Trust, Basque NGO and the Peak District Moreland Group. The, the reason we've carried out these mountain hare counts um, is to get a clear picture of what is happening in the Peak District to mountain hares. We know we've got mountain hares um, and whether they're increasing or declining. Of course, in common with other species, uh, they go through natural cycles anyway. Um, but we look forward to bringing you um, some results from that when we get them. Complaints from antis have killed plans to process deer carcasses in a rural larder in a English national park. Water company United Utilities wanted to build the facility near Hillswater in the Lake District. Residents claimed it would produce upsetting sights and smells. Antis wrote to the Lake District National Park Authority to complain. United Utilities withdrew the planning application after the local authority concluded that the character and nature of the facility would unacceptably adversely affect nearby homes. Research by an English university supports the use of heather burning as a means of combating climate issues. York University has completed 10 years of a 20-year study into heather management for protecting carbon-rich peatlands. At the halfway point, the findings show that the burning and mowing of small patches of heather supports increased vegetation. This goes against studies funded by the conservation industry and adopted by the government, which limits muir burn in England. The York University study also recommends using muir burning to create fire breaks and avoid wildfires. A polar bear has killed a mother and son outside a school in a village in Alaska. The animal mauled 24-year-old Summer Myomic and her one-year-old son Clyde. The bear chased residents in the town of Wales. Another resident shot and killed the animal as it attacked the two victims. 
It is the first fatal attack in Alaska in more than 30 years. The remote village has set up a GoFundMe page to raise money for the woman's family, including her surviving three-year-old daughter. See below for the link to the fundraising page. Thank you to Per Holmseth for the story. Raising the minimum age threshold of male lions could increase hunting sustainability. That's the conclusion of a study led by the University of Oxford. They predict that the population of wild African lions will decline by half over the next two decades because of habitat loss due to agriculture, declining prey populations, conflicts with livestock farmers, illegal poaching and some hunting. Most trophy hunting areas across Africa have a minimum age threshold for hunted male lions of six years. The study by Oxford's Wildlife Conservation Research Unit and Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences looked at 500 lions in 40 prides and showed that trophy hunting of younger males in areas with higher levels of poaching or conflict led to severe population declines, while restricting hunting to older males did not lead to declines. And finally, many of us have been guilty of grabbing a late night kebab, but you may be forgiven for thinking you've had one too many if you stumbled across a seal. This seal pup was spotted wandering hundreds of meters inland past the Istanbul Delight kebab shop in Hensby, Norfolk. Marine and Wildlife Rescue captured it at 11 o'clock on a Friday night, loaded into a stretcher and helped it back to the beach. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.